Hey guys, what's happening? So, the other day I had a uh, user comment one of my videos. Um, he wanted to know the difference between like a MOSFET and a solid state relay. Uh, so I decided to make a video showing the differences between the uh, different types of way of controlling external devices. Uh, with could be like, it could be an Arduino, it could be a 3D printer, CNC board, I'll go through all the boards. Uh, different ways of controlling external devices like pumps, LEDs, lights, etc. But um, so yeah, I have three different categories of devices on the on the table here for controlling external devices, and I'll go into detail of each one, like how they work and what's the uh, what's the benefit of them, and I guess also the downside too of uh, certain devices here. But all right, so the first category is the uh, triac or the uh, solid state relay. And the second category is the MOSFET transistor. And then third category is the opto-isolated relay. And I'll go more into detail about opto-isolation and uh, when to use it and why. Um, and then you have your old plain old relay. Uh, Non-protected, non-opto-isolated relay. And uh, I'll show you the reason why you probably shouldn't use this in, in a, a circuit. Um, but, and then I also have uh, some control boards here. Uh, I've been actually 3D printing for quite a while now. Um, and that's actually where I learned most of this stuff is by 3D printing CNC machines. Uh, my, actually, my background is in IT. That's what I do for a living. But my, I've been doing this hobby for probably almost 10 years. But, um, okay, so here we got is a, a an old ANET board. 8-bit ANET board. This was one of my first printers. Um, or actually second printer, I guess. And then uh, I have a couple of Creality boards. Uh, I get a lot of these old boards from like these 3D printers I, I repair. Um, then you have a Mach 3 board, old parallel port Mach 3 board. I have a Arduino slash gerbil based um, CNC board here. And then another older style. Um, I don't I can't remember if this is a 32-bit or an older. No, this is an MKS. I don't know. So this is actually an 8-bit board. So I do actually have 32-bit boards too. So the newer 3D printer boards that are coming out now are 32-bit. They also have one of these newer um, Ethernet-based uh, CNC controllers for uh, Mach 3, but you can also uh, go with, uh, you could run on Linux CNC now. But, alright, so, uh, this is obviously an unscripted video. <laughs> it's kind of going, playing by ear here. Alright, so, first category, the solid state relay. Um, it's an AC transistor, it's called a triac, and it's designed to pass, you know, AC current, let's say with a pump, electric, like a 110 or 120 pump, uh, two, you can even do like a 230, 240 pump, but it's designed to be controlled by a DC trigger. So a DC trigger from one of these boards. So typically one of these boards, you know, for 3D printing, it's usually five volts. For Mach 3, it's 24 volts. So you'd be setting that DC trigger to trigger that device. Um, and the second category is almost nearly identical to the solid state relay, the triac, and this is called a MOSFET. So these are pretty much nearly identical. The only difference is, is this is designed to, to pass DC current, not AC current. So identical, same exact technology, same idea. You know, you're using a smaller current to control a larger current. And one of the reasons why you'd want to do that is so you don't need to have extremely large traces on the board. You can make the board smaller and that kind of stuff. Um, but I'll go through like how the boards, there is actually MOSFETs on the board. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can actually like, so this would be typically used in like say like a heated bed for a 3D printer. You know, where you don't really want to pass that huge amount of current through your board. You want to have it controlled by an external device. So any, any larger bed, smaller 3D printers probably don't need this, but um, any like large bed, like 300 millimeter by 300 or, or bigger would um, probably do that. But, so yeah, I, I fix a lot of 3D printers and, and you know, any, any larger bed would have an um, external MOSFET. Any decent brand. Okay, next subject or next category here um, is the opto-isolated relay. And actually, maybe I should probably I should write that down. If you guys don't, if you're not familiar with an opto-coupler, so when, the, when you hear the term, it's, it's used a lot when you're buying this stuff, the opto-isolation, what they're referring to is called an opto-coupler. And it's a, a way to um, control a device without actually having any wires attached. 
so they're completely isolated, two isolated circuits. And it's, it's almost like it's the exact same concept because it's photo, that's, it's called opto, right? So um, optical, opto, right? Um, so it's basically like having a, like a TV remote. Like you're controlling your TV remotely, but you're not connected to the TV in any way at all. Like you're totally separate from the TV, right? But you're controlling the device remotely, but you're, that's the exact same concept of an opto isolation. And um, so it, it protects your circuits from high voltage current spikes. And mainly you'd see a lot of opto isolation in relays. So like these old relays, um, there's a downside to using them directly. And, and I'll go to that right now. But um, yeah, the relays are, are a little bit more versatile because typically if you look on them, you would see a, uh, a lot of these can actually do AC and DC. It doesn't really matter. But the main thing is you need another trigger voltage. Like uh, if you're using like a Arduino or any of this kind of stuff right here, you'd need to use a 5 volt uh, trigger. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter if it's opto isolated, but you need to figure out how it's being triggered on the opto isolator. So it's typically you're going to be 5 volt, 12 volt, or like 24 volt. Um, but the DC, the, the, the thing right here, you can actually pass like 110 current, 230. Like I originally had got this to, to pass uh, 220 or 240 to like an external like a pump. So I was going to have 110, 110 and controlled, you know, obviously two, two triggers. Well, I was actually going to pass one voltage to enable both relays. Um, so here's some of the uh, older relays um, that I don't really use in a circuit um, just because they're not protected. And I'll go with the reason, well, I mean, I'll try to explain why they're not protected. So here is a relay, and I hope you can see that. See that copper winding in there? Well, that's actually the coil. That's what actually activates the relay. Like, so when you, prov when you provide this thing a voltage, whatever the supply, rated supply voltage is, it creates an electromagnet, and it enables a, a couple, like, uh, like, contact points that trigger together, open and close like that. So electric magnetic, click, 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 right? So if you ever heard the clicking noise. Um, but the issue is that coil itself, that that copper coil in there, is actually like a large capacitor, where it's called an inductor. And when you shut the power off this device, it's going to send a huge voltage spike back into your circuit. Right? So if I have this thing connected directly to the circuit right here, let's say in one of the outputs, uh, let's see, like a Mach 3 board, right? it's going to send that current spike back into the board. And so typically, if you're wondering, like if you ever have a connected directly to it, and you shut your pump off, and all of a sudden your board reboots, or it fries out the, the actual individual input, then you'll know, um, or output, then you know that you're actually uh, not protecting your, your, uh, your, your circuit correctly. I mean, there's a way around that. You can... Um, um, typically what you would normally do is you'd actually have a, that's called a diode and when the high voltage flyback comes back into your circuit you'd actually use a diode to ground it. I should probably write this on a piece of paper, I'm not sure. But, okay, so, alright, so, alright, let me just show you some, uh, well, I'm going to go through this again and then I'll uh, show you some real world examples of my uh, CNC control boards. So I actually prefer to use solid state relays. Um, you know, but you're not doing things mechanically, you're doing things electronically. Um, I mean, there is a downside to the uh, Triagra MOSFETs, is that they tend to generate a lot of heat. Um, the more current that you pass through this device, the hotter it gets. So if you look at this, this is actually a high-end um, track here, a solid state relay. And see that huge heat sink on there? So, actually, I even have another board, I'll show you that in a second, but this... It's the same thing. This is designed to be mounted to a heat sink right here. So you put some thermal paste down there. But really, if you took this thing apart, it would look just like this. You probably have something like that in there. I mean, the Tri-X, they look almost exactly the same as a MOSFET. It's typically a, like a three-post transistor. Uh, and then, like I said, this right here, look at it. The more current you pass through these devices, the hotter it gets. So this one here, you can notice it doesn't have a heat sink on it. Um, if I pass less than one amp on it, I don't need to have a heat sink. But if I go over one amp, I think it's rated at five amp. Uh, then I need to actually put a heat sink on there to absorb some of the heat. Um, but yeah, this is definitely my preferred, you know, for controlling motors because I'm not dealing with clicking, clicking noises, and you know the possibility of somehow 
I mean, even though these are supposed to be protected, also opto-isolated, you know, if they're not wired right or something wrong with them, you're going to send that voltage spike. Because I've even actually had an opto-isolated relay. Somehow, I don't know what was going on with it, but it was still sending a voltage spike back into my circuit and rebooting my uh, my uh, board. So this is not 100%. I mean, it depends on how they wire it at the factory. Um, also, you should always ground trigger it if you like a relay. I mean, if you can. I mean, it, the preferred method is to uh, have a positive source always connected or directly connected to it. And then the uh, relay would be uh, triggered by a ground. So if I was controlling, like, a, let's say, uh, like a hotbed, LED lights, anything with DC powered, I'd, I'd use this MOSFET here. So yeah, these are a couple of beds. This one came out, I think, out of a Corrali. This was some other products I was running, but um, so hopefully this makes a little bit more sense with the opto isolation. And some of these actually boards that with it now. Um, let me show you this. Some of the boards actually have opto isolation inputs already. Like this uh, smooth stepper, this USB uh, Mach 3 smooth stepper, actually has our, it's already opto isolated on the input. I mean, I still don't trust it, but. So in theory, you wouldn't need to have an opto isolator. You could go straight to the to the relay. But I still don't like the idea. I'd still like to have double op opto isolated. Because I don't want that voltage spike coming back in the board. I'm trying to prevent that from coming back down the wires. Um, but here, here's actually another thing I didn't show you guys yet, but it's called the contactor. So it's another way to switch and control external devices. Um, the difference is a contactor is designed to pass usually larger currents, but it's AC controlled. So the trigger source is actually typically, I've never seen one on DC, but I'm sure they exist. Um, a contactor is triggered, the coil is triggered by AC instead of DC. So all, all the other examples, the track, the MOSFET, the relay, um, they were controlled by a, like a DC trigger on the board. Whereas a contactor, you know, you're not sending AC off the, you could if you wanted to like wire it into a track and do a lot of stuff, but, um, yeah, it's not controlled, uh, you know, you're, you're not controlling that from the board. You know, this is actually manually controlled by a switch I have. That little panel right there controls my uh, contactor. But let me show you another example, too. All right, so here is another CNC board that I'm building right here. And it's not done yet. I mean, I'm all say, I'm going to be putting a couple solid-state relays here. The one that I showed you, let me grab that. All right, so here we go. This is a solid-state relay. This is the one I just showed you. And they actually, they came with heat sinks. So when they're actually done, they'll be on these heat sinks right here. All right, so let me show you what's going on with this thing so far. So I don't really actually have the control switch. All right, so here is the uh, control switch. I'll just keep that there, the paddle switch. So I can explain to you what's going to be happening here. All right. So I have 220, 240 volt coming in. 110, 110, neutral, ground. And I actually have the neutral wire in here because my pumps are 110. So I need to be able to break off the neutral to supply 110 for the, uh, when I say 110, I mean like 120. I mean, it could be, you know, it doesn't, it's fluctuated over the years. Um, so basically this is providing the source. I'm setting 220 back up to my breakers here. Right. And that's basically feeding these contactors, these AT, AC contactors. And when these are triggered by this, this will send out, this will be wired into the 180, 120 AC circuit. That will activate the contactors, which then will then power on the two power supplies, 24 volt for the CNC board, 48 volt for the uh, my servos. Um, I'm actually running like the integrated servos. And then one of the contractors will come out and feed these solid state relays here remember the triax or AC right and then my spindle motor will come in here my 240 volt spindle motor will come into one each leg so I'm doing 110 or 120 120 it's coming off and this will be controlled directly by the control board this will be a, a 24 volt output from, from the control board the control board will be mounted on a different backboard because you really you want to separate your high voltage from your low voltage um, because you, AC actually has a lot of, it'll pick up a lot of EMI in your circuits, so you want to separate them, keep them as far away as possible. And then run shielded wire from your control board down to the relays and the, and the uh, MOSFETs or whatever you're going to be using. Um, 
So that will be controlling the spindle. And then, uh, you know, to control the pumps. So I have two outlets here. And that can be controlled by two different posts here. So I will have 24 volt, two 24 volt lines coming off my control board, which then will hit each of these relays. And I'll have 120 coming in to each relay. This will then feed back to each outlet. Um, so one will be the actual air pump. And the other one will be the, uh, it's like a little, you know, aquarium air bubbler pump. And then the other one will be actually like a, like a coolant pump, like water, water coolant. All right, hopefully that video makes sense uh, on why you actually use each of these things and why. Um, because I actually use all these things for different different circuitry all the time. And, you know, I mean, it's, these, they do go out. I mean, I, I because I fix 3D printers all day long. Um, you know, they do, you know, MOSFETs fail, people come in, their beds won't heat up. Um, oh, what I forgot to do with it, there's, they actually have MOSFETs. A lot of these, like most of these 3D printer boards actually have MOSFETs built onto them. So you don't usually need to have an external MOSFET. So if you look at these right here, those are MOSFETs. Um, typically they'll be under a heat sink right here, heat sink here. But you'll also notice that the uh, terminals will typically be bigger. Like a lower current stepper motor is pretty tiny, but you know, even the white, because you're, you're passing a larger current. Um, but you also notice the tracers on the board will be thicker too. So wherever you actually have a, uh, you know, like either a hot end or heat a bed, it will be a uh, larger trace. But hopefully this video helps somebody. Um, if you're new to this stuff, you know, uh, I mean, this was kind of confusing, the difference between, like, why you'd use each one. So, uh, yeah, but if you can, try to stay away from coils. I mean, straight relays if you can. You know, always make sure you protect your circuit. Uh, preferred method, MOSFET, TRIAC. I mean, least, least less desirable are these relays. But they're kind of universal because you can go AC or DC. So, all right, guys.